Good day, my dear students. Welcome to our PE class. Before we are going to start our discussion, kindly bow down your head and please feel the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for the gift of life and the gift of the people around us. Bless us every day with the presence of the Holy Spirit that we may always obey our parents' advice, heed our teachers' counsel, do good deeds to others, and most of all, follow your commandments. Dear God, make us as an instrument of your love so that we can be a good example to young souls like us. Amen. All right, so today you are going to learn a new lesson about physical education. And I believe that you are very excited. And by that, we have three lesson objectives to attain at the end of this lesson. First is identify health-related fitness and skill-related fitness components. Second, share insights about the importance of being physically fit through oral participation. And third, Perform exercises that indicates both health-related fitness and skill-related fitness. All right, so let's learn in PE class. All right, so please observe these following pictures. What are the activities or what part of this picture shows active activities? Is it picture A, picture B, picture C, or picture D? Hmm. What are the activities performed by the people in each pictures? How many pictures did you identify as active activities? Why do you say so? that the pictures you identified showed active activities. So let's go back to the pictures. So the activities being performed in each picture is on picture A, the child is just um, laying and playing online games. While the second picture, the children are swimming in the pool. And on the third picture, the child is just writing. And sitting on his chair. While in the fourth picture, the children are playing a ball. So by that, there are two pictures who shows active activities. And these are picture B and picture D. We could say that they show active activities because they are using the strength in order to move. So today, we're going to talk about physical fitness so what is physical fitness it is the state of being physically fit and healthy and being physically fit and healthy means being able to function your body effectively and efficiently it is your ability the ability of your body to work properly so physical fitness has two main components these are health related fitness and fit and skill related fitness components health related fitness it is responsible for the body's function these are the foundation of fitness and overall health and these components are the core of your body's fitness so before you are going to enhance your skills Health-related fitness components is very important. Why? Because it is the foundation of the fitness and your overall health. We have here the five components of health-related fitness. First is the cardiovascular endurance. Second is the muscular strength. Third is the muscular endurance. Fourth is the flexibility. And fifth is the body composition. So when we talk about cardiovascular endurance, it is the ability 
of the heart and lungs to work together in order to provide the needed oxygen and fuel to the body during sustained workloads. So I have here examples, jogging, cycling, and swimming. The Cooper Run is used most often to test cardiovascular endurance. So let me show you a video of how did I perform cardiovascular endurance exercise. All right, so it shows that I am jogging as well as kicking. And by that, the ability of my heart and my lungs are working together in order to provide the needed oxygen of my body. So that's the way you are going to exercise in cardiovascular endurance. Next is the muscular strength. Muscular strength is the amount of force a muscle can produce so for example is a bench press leg press or bicep curl the push-up test is most often used to test muscular strength let me show you a video of how did I perform muscular strength exercise I did the squatting and planking All right, so by that, the muscles, my muscles is providing a force in order for me to move. All right, so let's talk about muscular endurance. So muscular endurance is the ability of your muscles to perform continuous activities without fatiguing. So for example, cycling, step machines, and elliptical machines. The sit-up test is most often used to test muscular endurance. Let me show you a video of how did I perform a muscular endurance exercise. I did the squatting and kicking. In muscular endurance class, is, it is the ability of your muscles to perform different set of exercises and your body is continuously um, performing on it without fatiguing. Alright, so let's talk about flexibility. Flexibility is the ability of each joint to move through the available range of motion for a specific joint. For example, stre stretching individual muscles or the ability to perform certain functional movements such as the lunge the sit and reach test it is the most often used to test your flexibility let me show you this video i did the flexibility stre stretch this is flexibility stretch Alright, so let's talk about body composition. It is the amount of fat mass compared to lean muscle, mass, bone, and organs. In body composition, there is no exercise, but you are going to measure your body composition. So BMI is one of the most widely used to measure your body mass. So the weight is divided by height squared so for example my weight is 44 kil kilograms and my height is 1.54 meter so we have here 44 kilograms divided by 1.54 times 1.54 meters so it could become 44 kilograms divided by 2.54 3,409 and my BMI is 18.79 kil kilogram meter squared. So let's see the 
BMI range. In BMI range, you will know if you are underweight, you are having a healthy weight range, or you are overweight or obese. So if you are below 18.5, you're in the underweight range. Between 18.5 and 24.9, you're in the healthy weight range. Between 25 and 29.9, you're in the overweight range. And between 30 and 39.9, you're in the obese range. So that's the way you are going to measure your body composition using BMI or body mass index. Now, let's talk about skill-related rela fitness components. These are the components that will enhance your performance in athletic or sports events. It pertains more to motor skills required in sports and tasks. So we have here the six components of skill-related fitness. The first one is the agility. Second, balance. Third is the coordination. Fourth is the speed. Fifth is the power and sixth is the reaction time. When we talk about agility, it is the ability to change and control the direction and position of the body while maintaining a constant rapid motions. So by this, you are moving and changing your direction. So for example is you are going to hit a tennis ball. So you are going to change your direction as being shown in this GIF. Let me show you an exercise that I perform in order to show agility. This one. I am changing direction while I am moving. Right, so by that, I was changing my direction because I go to the left and to the right and I am moving. So that's the way your body's ability to change and control the direction and position of it. Next is the balance. So let's talk about balance. It is the ability to control or stabilize the body when a person is standing still or moving. So for example, inline skating, or it could be biking as being shown in this GIF. Let me show you a video about performing balance. By this, I need to do the balance so that the egg tray will not fall as I am walking. Alright, that shows balance. Next is the coordination. It is the ability to use the senses together with body parts during movement. So for example, dribbling a basketball, you are using your hands and eyes together and it is called hand-eye coordination. Why? Because you are using your senses and you are using your hand and your eye in order to move the ball. So let me show you the exercise that I did that shows coordination. That's it. All right, so let's talk about speed. It is the ability to move your body or or parts of your body swiftly. Many sports rely on speed to gain advantage over your opponent. So speed meaning you are moving your body swiftly, as fast as you could or quickly. All right, so like this one. Kindly watch this video. Imagine that I am running and I am doing like that. So that shows speed. Next, so for example, Speed. A basketball player making a fast break to perform a layup. A tennis player moving forward to get a drop shot. A football player 
outrunning the defense to receive a pass. So by that, you are going to use your speed in order to perform such activity. Next is power. It's the ability to move the body parts swiftly while applying the maximum fo force of the muscles. Power is a combination of both speed and muscular strength. Alright, so for example, full box in football muscling their way through other players and speeding to advance the ball and volleyball players getting up to the net and lifting their bodies high into the air just like what being shown in this gif so the player is lifting his body high into the air and do the spiking and by that it shows power let me show you how did i do an exercise showing power all right that shows power that shows power because i lift my body high and do the spiking next reaction time it is the ability to reach or respond quickly to what you hear see and what you feel so for example you are sleeping at night and then you hear something um, on the rooftop and then you just wake up in your bed and just say what's that so that's your reaction because you are curious what's happening on your rooftop it could be that you will feel worried you will feel afraid that's the way you react so also in scale related fitness components reaction time is needed why because it is needed that you need to respond quickly on what you hear see or feel on your environment for example this one with my brother he throw a plastic bottle to me and look how did the way i respond is it quickly or slowly by that i i react quickly why because if i didn't i will not catch the plastic bottle so here's another example an at Athlete quickly coming off the blocks early in a swimming or track relay or stealing a base in a baseball. So just like being um, presented here in this GIF, the athlete is running quickly because he see that he could steal the base in the baseball. All right. So since we we already talked about the two major components of physical fitness let's talk about the physical activity pyramid because it is the guide of filipinos on how often you should participate in certain activities to attain physical fitness you need to do physical activity so that you will be healthy and how are you going to become healthy by keeping yourself active so let's talk about the pyramid the base the base is composed of habitual tasks that most of us definitely do every day for example when you wake up in your bed you just do the stretching all right so this one taking stairs instead of elevator you are walking to the store or church taking stretch break when you're doing your work or your homework when you are doing your household chores so that that's the day-to-day -day activities that you are doing but you are unaware that it is part of the filipino pyramid activity guide next the second level of the activity pyramid guide shows the activities that you should do regularly at least three times a week or as much as five times a week so we have here the aerobic exercise and recreational activities so we have here could be running jogging bicycling and in rec recreational activities you have the ballroom dancing 
badminton, basketball, softball. Yes, all right. So let's talk about the third level of the pyramid. It is where the leisure activities and exercises are. These activities are done frequently. So we have here leisure activities like go to the mall, stro strolling, play golf, go bowling. Exercise for strength and flexibility, You're, you do the stretching, yoga, tai chi, resistant training. And for the top of the pyramid, it is composed of the activities that you should do least, least, meaning you do it minimally. People who follow this lifestyle do not participate in any physical activities. So we have here, you're just doing um, sitting, lie around or be a couch potato, watching TV, play cards. It is really, um, should be done minimally, a few times a month. Because you will not be active if you're just doing this kind of activities. And now, I believe that you have learned something about physical fitness. Thank you so much for listening, class. Stay safe and God bless. Important reminder, perform warm-up exercises before engaging to vigorous activities.